Today we're going to talk about how and why to convert your images to WebP images on your WordPress website. So pretty much all of us are very well acquainted with PNGs as well as JPEGs and obviously to some degree GIFs or GIFs if you like to pronounce it that way. But more recently you may have noticed a newer type of image come onto the scene particularly in the realm of the web and that is WebP. Part of the reason why WebP has web owners or website owners more excited is the fact that it is significantly more efficient than using a PNG or a JPEG. In fact, a WebP image is up to 26% faster than a PNG and it is 25 to 34% smaller than a JPEG. Now you might be wondering that all sounds interesting or maybe it doesn't sound interesting, but what does that mean for me as somebody who owns a WordPress website? As it turns out, according to a number of statistics that have been done throughout the past year, upwards of 56% of all website traffic has been accessed through a mobile device. Now mobile devices are great, but what a lot of us don't really take into account, particularly as we're running our websites, is the fact that most people or many of the people using those mobile devices to access, access our website are doing so not through Wi-Fi, but through their device's data plan. And as you probably well know, that data is limited for a lot of people. Plus, if people are going to be accessing your site from a place that doesn't have very good reception, it's quite possible that if your site is too slow, it won't even load at all. So this is one of the reasons why WebP is so exciting for people who own websites, because it enables you to serve images that are significantly faster or lighter weight, which means that it's going to use less data of the person who is accessing the site and it's going to load faster. It's two things that are going to make it more likely that that person stays on your site longer. Because as it turns out, one of the biggest factors that actually slows down a website, particularly a WordPress website, are images that are needlessly too big. So for example, if you have a very photo-centric website and you upload that full-size photo, which depending upon how many megapixels it was when you took it, that thing could be over 10 megabytes, even up to 20. I know some of the raw photos I take are like 25 megabytes. And if I'm uploading that to my WordPress website and not doing anything else, but letting the theme or the website just show that image as it is, that's 10, 20, 25 megabytes of data just to load a single image. Okay, WebP sounds like it would be a great solution because it's smaller than your average JPEG or PNG, but I don't wanna to have to go through my entire WordPress image library and start converting them and re-uploading. That would be a nightmare and nobody would want to do that. Fortunately, there is a free plugin with a free or paid service depending on how much you use it called Imageify. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to install, activate, and start to use this plugin not only to replace all of the images on your site with PNGs or from PNGs and JPEGs into WebP, but also compress them as well so that you have images that are compressed and are using the super fast WebP format. Okay, so here's a demo site that I have up and running on uh, Notable Press. And so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna pop on over to the plugin section of our WordPress website. And we're just gonna go ahead and click add new. And then you should be able to search for image, Imageify. Give that a second to load. And there we go. Then we're just going to go ahead and install this free plugin and click activate. Okay, so once you have activated the plugin, you're gonna have a step-by-step -step process that's gonna guide you through. The first thing that you're gonna do is you're going to create a free account. And so you just wanna enter in your email address and then sign up. I've already signed up for an account, but what they're gonna do is they're going to email you uh, an API key, which you're then going to paste in this box. So I'm gonna grab my API, I'm not gonna show it on screen, and then paste it in here. Okay, so now I have added the API key that was sent to me via email. So I'm gonna click OK, and then I'm gonna go click on Go to Settings. Now under the settings, you're gonna notice a number of different options that you have here. First of all, the optimization level. So in essence, this is going to choose how much or how hard it compresses the image. 
So if you do normal, it's gonna be lighter compression, which means you're gonna end up with a higher quality image. Aggressive is gonna be somewhere in the middle and ultra is going to be the very smallest file size possible while distorting and potentially losing some of the quality of the image. I personally have just stuck with aggressive and then they also have a visual comparison here as well where you can actually kind of see and you gotta look and squint pretty closely to see how it's actually compressing it, but uh, it's a good example if you want to be able to kind of nitty gritty look and see how much it's going to get pixelated if you start to do these compressions. Okay, so now auto optimize images on upload. You're typically going to want to keep that checked. This is going to, every single time you upload an image to your WordPress library, it's going to automatically in the background compress this image. Then if you want to, you can have it back up original images. So what's gonna happen uh, is it's going to potentially crop down or resize huge images down to a smaller size. And so this is gonna save the original image. I, I typically uncheck this uh, mainly because I want it to take up less space on the server. However, as they warn you here, you're losing that original image. So you can't recrop or re-optimize. You're stuck with whatever this does to the image. That is your final image on the server. So you can always re-upload if you save the original, which I do, but you'll just want to be aware of that. I do it just to say, like I said, to save space on the server. So it's not, it doesn't have a ton of massively, massive size images that are uh, just sitting on the server. Uh, then I typically get rid of, uh, I don't check this, I don't keep any of the data that it stores in terms of from the photo itself. And then the next option we have down here is the uh, one that we're kind of leading up to, which is the WebP format. So you can actually leave this check to create WebP versions of images. And then the next thing that we want to do is check that we want to display images in WebP format on the site. So this is going to any place throughout the site that has an image displayed. Instead of displaying the PNG or the JPEG, instead it's going to display the WebP format, which as we mentioned earlier, is going to be lighter weight and faster loading. So for this, for most cases, you're probably, unless you're a developer and you really know what you're doing with rewrite rules and you're using a CDN, all you're gonna wanna do is just use the picture tag. That's gonna be the simplest. And they've got a whole, on their site, they've got a help guide if you wanna get into some of the more nitty gritty. But for most of us, we're just going to use their default settings. The other option we have here, which I alluded to earlier, was the ability to resize larger images. This is great because if you're uploading an image that's five, 6,000 pixels wide, that's really a waste. You don't need images that big. And so this is going to take the biggest version of the image and it's gonna scale it down to whatever size you put here, which is gonna be 2560 pixels wide by default. That alone is gonna save you some massive space on your server. The next option we have here is to specify which specific versions of that image that this will actually optimize. So as you may well know, WordPress, when you upload a single image to your image library, it creates a whole bunch of different sizes of that image. Some of them are cropped to a square to various shapes, and some of them are just maintain the aspect ratio of the original image. Now, if you decide to, you can leave all of these checked. However, what you'll notice here is that you have a limit in terms of how much you can use per month with a free account. You can upgrade to a paid account to do unlimited, but you have a limited number of compressions that you can do. So what you have to realize is that if you leave these checked, it's going to do a compression for every single one of these images, and that's gonna to count toward your limit. So what I typically do is I leave all of these unchecked except for the ones that I know are going to be heavily used. And so in this case, it's just gonna be the grid item and then the tool thumbnail. So sometimes you might also do a larger size as well, but those are the only two that I think are going to really need it in this particular example. So we'll leave that checked. Then this is totally up to you, but if you want this to be hidden, which I do, uh, you can uncheck that and then we can click save changes. Now what we're also going to do, we're gonna go ahead and click save those changes so we make sure that they end up getting saved. But if you want to go and optimize all of the images that are already in your library, if you wanna transform all of the images to WebP and compressed, go ahead and click save and go to bulk customizer or bulk 
optimizer, I should say. Then you're gonna get taken to this nifty little screen, which is going to show you the options you have here. So all we're gonna do, we've got our media library. I wanna set this to aggressive. You can set this to ultra or normal if you want to. But this is actually going to go through and it's going to optimize our entire library. Now this is just a demo site, so there's not very many images. What we can do is let's go ahead and pop on over to the front end of this site. And let's go ahead and take one of these images and just drag them over to our desktop. I'm just gonna do this just as an example. As you can see, it's 64K, which at this size, it's not too big, but it's also a JPEG. So now let's go ahead and go through the compression, compression process so that it actually converts all of these images over to a compressed version and then to WebP. So we'll go ahead and start the optimization. Remember, if you're gonna be uh, compressing a huge library or a lot of stuff, you're going to have to go for a paid account uh, under Imageify. So you wanna make sure that whatever, if you're doing a huge library, you may have to pay for a month or two uh, worth of credits to be able to do this. But if you've got a small account, you should be able to just get by with their free version. So we're gonna go ahead and click start the optimization. And this is going to go through and compress and optimize each of the image, uh, each of the images according to the settings that we chose previously. One of the other things you can do as it's optimizing is you can just click this button that says view details and you can actually see with the image next to it as it is going through and optimizing each of these images. Okay, and so now that that particular compression has completed, what we can do is we can head on over to the front end of the website and drag on over that same image that we were working with previously. And as you'll be able to see, it was a JPEG and now it is serving that WebP version of the image. Now it depends on how many image compressions you're going to have to do. I personally pay for their pro plan, which allows unlimited uh, compressions. So that's, I think $10 a month is what I pay for that. And I think they also have one that's like $5 a month that's capped at like 300 megabytes. But if you're only uploading a few images here and there, you can actually get away with their free version. And so just that simple, you can actually start serving WebP images on the front end of your WordPress website. So as always, if you found this video useful, hit that like button. And as always, as well, be sure to leave me a comment if there is something that I can help with either on WordPress or video or something that you would like to see a video or tutorial about in the future, and I would be happy to do it. And with that, I look forward to seeing you in that next video.